I believe that the shift to the Common Core Standards presents a truly unique opportunity for curriculum. With this new framework, decisions about new curriculum are being made all over the country. Millions of dollars are being allocated and spent even as you watch this video. To be most successful with these new standards, we need to see them as a new starting point, not as something just to be layered on top of everything else we've already been doing. This is a time we should be thinking about personalization instead of one-size-fits-all, integrated process and skills instead of isolated content, real world instead of irrelevance, and iteration and collaboration instead of top-down hierarchies. It is time for a new era in curriculum. Beyond the Common Core, there are several other critical developments that make this a unique time for curriculum. One is the advent of digital content. The State Ed Tech Directors Association recently issued a report called Out of Print, Reimagining the K-12 Textbook in a Digital Age, in which they called on policymakers to complete the shift to digital resources in five years. And the textbook, the book itself, was the best technology that we had at the time, 50 plus years ago. At a time where information was scarce, where it was difficult uh, to share it, um, and uh, being able to bind that all together in one book and provide that to every student and every teacher was the best tool that we had at the time. In 2012, it's hard to argue that that is the most efficient uh, method to provide access, particularly given the dramatic changes in student population, where uh, books are one-size-fits-all, our students are hardly, uh, never have been, and are increasingly even less so. With students already using technology outside of school to create their own compelling content, and with some of the research that we cite in the paper and other research that's out there that talks about how the use of this content can play an increased role in student engagement and student achievement, and with the flexibility that digital content provides for us, especially open educational resources, can we really afford to wait any longer? Open Educational Resources, or OER, are not only free and digital, but are also open licensed so that anyone can use, adapt, and redistribute them. This permits legal remixing and sharing and encourages deeper learning. If it's open education resources, you can make good content better for this student and that student and that student because you can change it each time to meet that student's needs. While reducing cost is often a motivation for using OER, this may not be the most significant benefit. The state of Utah has been a pioneer in using OER in K-12. And it really turned out that cost was not the major factor that drove the interests of the teachers in the districts that were interested in participating with us. They were actually more interested in working with electronic resources that would increase their access and ability to use multimedia and other electronic resources in a seamless way. They wanted to have input in the design of our books. The benefits of openness go far beyond instructional materials. Engaging in a collaborative, open process builds teacher professionalism and ultimately creates a richer learning environment. So open text gave us some different options. We know that teachers have always shared materials and they've always shared books. This really helps us formalize that sharing process. One of the things that we found is that as teachers came together to create textbooks and to really talk about their content, those became very empowering conversations for those teachers. And they began to engage with their own content and pacing and scope and sequence in a way that hadn't really been open to them before because it meant that was how the book was put together. And so their conversations about what was going to happen in their classroom opened up a lot of depth and complexity as they began to plan things. Beyond textbooks, open resources can include video, simulations, and interactivities. Open practices can lead to teachers and learners creating their own learning experiences and collaborating with others to address real-world problems.